So, um, for the people that just joined, uh, earlier on I talked about uh, the meaning of decentralization and why decentralization is about making a web which is more uh, interoperable, um, where users control their own data, and in essence a web which is more decent. And so, as I said earlier, Solid is a solid attempt to a decent, for a decent web. So let's talk about the non-decent web, in which we have um, a lot of websites which very likely don't talk with each other. And the way these websites are designed, or these web services are designed, is that the UI, the logic of the app, and the server and the database, it's all in the same package. And you don't control uh, any of that. And yeah. But this does not just happen with the website we have online, uh, which could be our cloud storage or our um, uh, social networking application. This also happens with uh, open source application that we install on our own machine if we try to uh, act in a more uh, decentralized way. So to give you an example, I can install uh, four different open source projects on my machine, they all do um, cloud storage, but still, although I have control, I, this do not interoperate with each other. I have the um, this superpower of portability, which means I can bring files from one software to another, but this do not talk with each other. So the problem of interoperability is a problem that affects both the centralized world and the world garden of open source applications. But let's take this vision a bit uh, beyond uh, what is the web today. One day, I'll want my fridge to talk with my microwave. I have no idea what they're going to discuss. But I have this fridge and this microwave, and they're from two different brands. How are they going to interact? Are they going to talk through the Facebook of things and then uh, chat with each other? So um, one, the fridge talks to the server, and the server will eventually <coughs> talk to the uh, microwave, or should we do this in a decentralized fashion? And is the fridge going to understand what the microwave is saying? So let me, un let me underline the problem, because the problem is not just for the users, it's also for the developers. So let me give you an example. We have thousands of web services, even um, the, the open source that we installed, they all have different APIs, and the developer has to to write a new application has to learn this API, and this API, and this API, and then they have to write the bridge across these APIs. And these services really don't talk to each other unless the developer makes them talk to each other. And the user, in the case of centralized application, has no control on their data. And most of the times, this data are, because this data is stored on a server which they don't own, or just because, um, the platform makes it very difficult to, ex to export the data and make them reusable in other places. And more importantly, what the hell is identity online? So we want to, the way, the way I envision identity, and I, I, Andre, Andre more than me, is that identity should be the couple for an applic for, uh, from applications. When I go on a website, this website should not offer me to create an account because I should be able to use my own online identity which I might have created from a place that I want to. There should be identity providers that I should choose. I could be my own identity provider or I should choose another identity provider. And the identity and the data should be totally decoupled by the logic of the application. And so in fact, what are our principles? Our principles are exactly the opposite as we said before. There should be a standardized API for uh, accessing, edit, editing, and patching resources. Things, should, things and uh, web services should interoperate, and the user should have the control of the data, and there should be a decentralized identity. So what is the solid approach? The solid approach is about splitting these things and making all of this modular. And let me tell you about these three modules, these three divisions that we highlight. 
there is the console of server, the console of data, and the console of applications. And not all of them together as we've seen before. Apps no longer run on their own servers. App can run, can run on multiple servers. <coughs> apps do not require authentication. Uh, well, apps no longer require authentication, meaning that uh, apps do not longer need uh, to offer uh, account creation. And this should be a generic REST API, and the generic REST API that Solid is built on, as Andre will uh, talk about later, is on LDP, which is a big word, which uh, it's even bigger when you expand it, which says linked data uh, platform. But what it really is, it's a standard which gets all these conventions from the RESTful API world and applies that to resources. But Andre is going to discuss that later on. And the key idea here is that logic and data are totally separated. Which means that um, apps and data can be on different servers. And data, as, as, as I said before, is separated from the server and the application. And this means that if the data is separated, I can reuse this data with this app or with this app or with this app. And this is the beauty of this, because imagine, um, imagine a doctor that has a software for, for patients and then a, has a website for handling um, something else on these patients, and then <laughs> each tool he uses needs to access uh, his patient data. Does he have to duplicate all this data everywhere, or can he just use this data that he can put wherever he wants on one server or on multiple servers that he controls or he, or he trusts? So this is the great thing, is that if I have uh, the data of the chat, I can use any chat application to chat with someone. The key goals that Solid is pushing is this modular design, in which we want to decouple everything. And we want, we want to build and we want, we want to push developers to build uh, applications which are generic, which means uh, that they can work on any server and they can work uh, on any data and they should write applications so that um, this application and this application can still uh, access the data and uh, work together. So this is all the concept of interoperability that I discussed earlier on. And the key thing that Solid is about is about building upon web standards. We don't want to reinvent yet another protocol. And Solid is not yet another protocol. Solid is a glue across existing protocols. So, how does it work? Andre, I think you should come here and explain us how it works. Thanks, Nico. No that was pretty solid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, so basically, Solid is all about decentralization. We have a decentralized oh, conversation. Decent, I think. Yeah, with nice. decent microphone. <laughs> so to make the um, so so Solid is all about decentralization. This basically means that we have a decentralized identity uh, system in which you control exactly how much data you disclose about yourself. You have one or more profiles that are linked to your identity and this is data that is stored on a server where you, that, that you control under your personal control. Also, we have a decentralized authentication protocol um, and this is really important because, for instance, you don't want to, uh, if you want to share data with people, you don't want to create accounts for everyone. Sometimes, you may want to share, you may end up sharing data with someone you don't even know yet. So how do you do that uh, if you don't know who the person is? Um, so next we have a decentralized, of course, access control mechanism. So you can build uh, policies that um, are reusing this identity mechanism, which is basically just an HTTP URI uh, that we call WebID. And uh, these access control policies also apply to applications. So we can have a, an origin-based policy that would only allow an application that is hosted on a specific origin, a specific domain, to access 
the data. So you can actually control who gets to access the data and through which application that data can be accessed. And finally, we have a generic and RESTful data, data API. And this is what uh, Nicola mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, and this runs LDP, basically. Um, I'm going to quickly, uh, so yes, so basically everything uh, in our world, everything revolves around URIs because this is the common denominator between um, services, between servers and applications on the web. You need to have resolvable URIs that um, identify things, things that are on the web uh, and also concepts and, and things that are in the real world but described on the web. So. Uh, as opposed to the general concept of loading um, an application uh, from some server on the web and then uh, basically that application runs on that server, it connects to a local database there, it brings everything from the same source. Um, in, in a solid world, you just load the JavaScript, the CSS and the HTML plus whatever images the, the application uses from any location on the web. It could be from, um, let's say, myapp.com, or it could be from GitHub, or it could be even hosted on your own server. Uh, it, it's up to you. It, we're all about flexibility and, and options, giving options. So we, uh, we in Solid think that you should have the choice to decide how many servers you need to use and where they are located. You could have a personal server which runs at home and it may not run on a very um, powerful connection or a very uh, high speed connection, but that should be enough, let's say, for your banking data. Just, you know, data which is really, really private and which you don't really want to disclose with anyone else. But you can also have a work server uh, on which you store data that uh, you collaborate with, um, that, that you collaborate on with your uh, coworkers, as well as um, public data like a blog post or some, some very high traffic data that is public. You could store that on the cloud somewhere. The point is that you have the choice where you want to store data and what data you want to store there. So the way this works is that you load the JavaScript, the HTML, and the CSS from the app provider, and then that app runs in your browser. From that point on, the app fetches data from your data sources, from as many data sources that the app needs uh, in order to present you with a proper um, set of you know, functionalities. Um, but it does this in a secure way. And also, Nicola mentioned that uh, for us, there is no longer this concept of authenticating to an application because the application doesn't need you to authenticate to it anymore because it doesn't store your data. So the application is just a, a skin. It's a presentation layer which runs on top of the data that it gets from your server. So basically, you're not even logging into the application, you're logging into every data source that you that the application works with. So that is completely different from, from the applications of today in which you create accounts everywhere. You have to manage all that mess. And finally, the application providers are kept out of the loop. It's basically just a uh, Jon Snow reference. Like They don't know anything about what, happen what happens there. Uh, they don't get to see who the users are that use this application. They don't get to see um, what data goes through this application. It's basically a peer-to-peer -peer like system between your client, your browser, and all the data sources the application works with. Here is a quick example of how you write data using the, uh, this generic API. Um, <laughs> Let's say you just want to write that you're going some, somewhere, you, you want to post a note saying that you're going somewhere, you just uh, send a post request with some data in it and the, the URI of the, the container, the URI of the 
of the master resource in which this new resource should be created. You're creating a document inside, it's, it's, like, it's like the file system actually. You're creating a document inside a, a directory. That's what you do. Um, I'm not going to go into details, but basically you can also control, uh, if you see the second line there, it's called a slide header. Uh, you can control exactly how the namespace uh, looks like. So you, no, you can name the resources any way you want, but you can, if you omit that, the server will create a generic name for your resource. So if you're working with a bunch of data that you don't really care about how you call, then you can just easily post that. Um, updating data is just as easy. Um, it's, a, it's a patch operation at this point uh, in which you replace uh, the data that you want to change with something else and you're using the URI of the new resource that has been created. Um, <laughs> but deleting data is its a simple delete operation. So you see, the point is that you work with individual resources and this gives you a lot of freedom because you can have access control policies that apply to individual resources. So you can um, like separate exactly uh, who can access and what resources can access at a very granular level, so you can share specific, you can share parts of the data, let's say in a directory, with exactly the people you want to share it with, and there will be no overlap. Everyone has their own access control policies, and everyone uh, they they don't really need to know what they can do. The the server will let them know whether they're allowed to write data or if they're allowed to change data or delete it. So, what's the advantage? Why, why, why do you even want to use this software anymore? Um, well, for once, it allows you, if you, when you control data and you store it in one specific place, you don't have to replicate it, which means that you can build a social graph that stays with you regardless of the application um, that you're using. So, it's no longer, uh, you know, we no longer have this problem in which you, uh, in which let's say a new social network appears and you want to try it out, but you're going to go there and you're going to find yourself all alone because none of your friends care about it or want to move there, right? So there's basically you're going to be forced uh, by maybe peer pressure to go back to Facebook or to go back to some existing social network which has all your friends on it. So this is. Actually, the, the social graph is one of the main causes why uh, alternative decentralized solutions really don't work. Because if we don't all move to the new thing, it's, it's no fun. It's, it's going to be a ghost town. So we don't, people don't want that. We also have the ability to add new features to applications. Applications can, if they're open source, if they're on GitHub, people can clone them, they can add features, but because the data stays the same, because the data is really generic, these features, this new application, this fork, which has a new feature, will still work with the previous data. It will work with your friend's data. They're just not going to be able to see the new feature, but it, the, the, all, the base uh, functionality of the application will still be there and if the feature is really cool you may want to merge it back into the main application basically and everyone benefits and this is really important for it because we have a you know if you, if you want to change something in Twitter right now if you want to make if there's a really new and cool platform for instance which is not um, accessible for the disabled then unless you work for that company you won't be able to convince them in time to push that feature even though you have the necessary skills to make that change. There's, the process is really complicated. And for Solid, you no longer have this problem because you can fork the application, you can improve it yourself, and then everyone else will use it. It's, it takes a lot less time to improve software using this model. This like button on Facebook. <coughs> yeah. F Facebook? Um, we also get, we can also build better uh, governance and democracy tools because we can have, um, let's say, 
let me give you an example of a, a simple voting process in a, in a small community, right? Yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of lobby around building a mall in the place of a park, right? And people want to vote whether they should keep the park or build the, the mall. How do you make sure that those votes are actually real? They're coming from people. If there's only one entity that controls, that governs the whole voting process. Um, so with Solid, everyone registers their vote on their own servers. And if someone wants to do an audit of this process, they can check with everyone whether they voted one way or another way. So hopefully we'll be able to see a lot more um, government, uh, e-governance e tools coming up. But we also have, we can also have new business models um, because uh, we're hoping actually that companies will stop uh, trying to build their businesses around your data and instead try to compete on features, try to compete on better, cleaner UI, for instance. And that's, that would be the, the thing that drives users to their application. It's going to be the features, it's not going to be, um, there, there won't be a user lock-in anymore. And because people have this option to move to a different, to easily move to a different service or, or to a different application, then they will have to compete on this set of features. Um, another example I could give you is that uh, when you store data under your control, uh, you don't have to manage multiple accounts anymore. For instance, you have an account with Amazon, you have an account with eBay, and with some other uh, Best Buy or Target or whatever, whatever other website. You don't have to manage your, uh, your data on each of these accounts. And because the data is in one place, you can save all your favorites, all your likes, all your interesting items in, into one place which is curated. And these, all these services know that if they behave properly, if they don't uh, take your data and share it with advertisers, then um, they, can, they can get access to your data. And that data is always fresh. And that is really valuable for a company, especially one that tries to sell you goods. Um, and one other incentive for them to switch to this system is that um, uh, the data is fresh. Uh, the data that they use does not necessarily have to be created just by them, just by one application. It can be data which comes from a bunch of sources. So they benefit from, even from you using their competitors in the end. That's a, that's a bit, I know it's a bit of a change, but um, I can explain uh, in more detail if you find me after. There's also uh, this. Does anyone know what the HTTP 402 code stands for? Uh, pardon me, Colin. Okay. It's actually a pretty recent um, HTTP code which says payment required. So you, if you have your data that, and you own it, you can start charging for it. And that's really game changing. Like, you know, using an application right now, going, you know, installing something on your phone, even, even a simple to-do application requires access to your contacts. Why? I don't know. Uh, a weather application requires access to your friends. I don't know why. But the point is, you may want to use that application. Not everyone uh, has the resources to pay for uh, a um, ad-free application, right? Especially if you're in college or if you're a teenager. So at that point, you may want to pay with your data, just the way we do it now, uh, the way we do it now. Or uh, if you can afford to upgrade uh, to the um, ad-free application, or if you if you if you think your data is valuable, actually, then you can start charging for it. If you're an important person, you have a lot of followers, then that's really valuable data for um, a bunch of companies, and you can make money out of it. Hopefully, so you're, I guess we're going to turn into something like this. Um, yeah, one day. So, now what? Well, 
Uh, I think we might have just enough time to do some demo. Uh, I'm going to skip up the, over the example and I'm going to show you just how easy it is to, uh, to use solid. Um, if you, I'm not sure you can see exactly the, the URL in the address bar. This is a contacts application that is that we are hosting on GitHub. Um, there are, you know, you have the option to host the application wherever you want. There's a reason why we chose to use GitHub because we can push updates easily, and users don't have to go and you know reinstall everything every time. But if you think, for instance, if you're going to be working with a banking application or with something that's more uh, sensitive in terms of privacy. Then you can decide, okay, I'm going to do an audit of this application just to make sure it's not going to leak any data. And if I decide that, yeah, okay, it passes all my requirements, I can take it, I can, I can clone it to my own uh, server, and then it runs there and no one can touch it. No one can alter it. So I know it's, it's pretty safe. But in this case, we're going to run it from GitHub. Um, GitHub obviously doesn't give you a database, right? So doesn't give you a way to store data, to have persistent data. So with solid, that is actually not really a problem because the data doesn't uh, get stored on GitHub. So what we're doing here is just, what the users have to do is a one-click action that will get them from this state in which the application has no idea who the user is or where the data is into this. And at this point, the application knows who you are, the application knows what your data sources are, and then it renders the data in a way that the user can, can look at it and make something out of it. Um, it's, it's a fairly uh, basic application. It gives you the option to, to manage your contacts. Um, you can do... You can do updates. Um, and these updates patch the resources in real time. So you can see the change here, for instance. And this is all data which is stored on a server that I have on a Raspberry Pi in my office at MIT. So you can see it's pretty, I mean, it's, the application itself is really responsive. Um, there's, there's really no penalty uh, in terms of using this technology. Uh, I can also update my, uh, let's see, let's make my name uh, contain my middle name as well. So my full name now will have, let's say, my middle name. Uh, oops, that's not my full name. I'm going to save this, it's been updated, and now if I refresh this page, yeah. huh. <coughs> I should have updated my name. Or maybe it doesn't use that, anyway. Um, so the point is, the data is stored somewhere which is um, in a generic server which is reused by every other application. So I don't have to go and modify my data on my, uh, on, on every application I use, every time I change my name, every time I change my email, every time I want to update my profile picture. It's in one place, I do it once, every other be application benefits from it. Um, we have a couple of, uh, servers that you can play with. Um, we're hoping that you will get really interested in this technology and that you will be able to contribute code. We have a pretty long feature list that is um, that we're hoping to uh, to, you know, to share with people and in, in the hope that we can attract uh, contributors. Uh, and basically the point is that um, once you learn how this technology uh, can be used once you learn exactly um, how you can benefit from it, you will be 
interested in collaborating with us and helping us build uh, nicer tools and you know, better tools that will fit your needs as well. We have a uh, set of tutorials that we have just started. This is pretty fresh stuff, so expect it to change a lot. Um, but it's, it's a start, so you may want to take a look at that link there. Um, and I guess the point is that we should all try to work together. We're, not, we're hoping that we're not going to be doing some work in our own corner away from everyone else. We're very open to collaborators. We are very open to suggestions, to use cases. We want to know exactly what your needs are, what your problems are, and if we can solve them for you. So that's why uh, you have a GitHub link there. Uh, that's where all the stuff that we work on is uh, located. Uh, we have a pretty decent spec that you can read. It's really not that heavy. Um, please contact us if you have any questions or if you want to collaborate with us. Uh, we'll be more than happy to accommodate you, I guess. Thanks. Unhosted uh, uses specific endpoints in the API that give you access to the data. So you have to do some pretty nasty hacks to to be able to to post um, to, to be able to make sure that people have different levels of access to the kinds of operations they want to do with the data because everything goes to the same place every time. And for us. Uh, the difference is that we work with individual URIs. For us, the URI is the core part of the system. Like every action you do, every kind of manipulation you do for, with the data, it involves doing it for that specific resource. There is no endpoint that you have to go through. You work with individual resources. And that is, that's really the key difference, I think, between unhosted and solid. Second point, um, yes, so you have, I imagine my answer to you uh, would be that whoever wrote the voting application that gives the user the interface to click the vote button would store an aggregate of the links which point to where the, da the actual data resides. So you have just a collection of data sources basically, and then you just follow the links. The data is stored on the user's server under the user's control, but that link for that specific resource which contains your vote is also found on, let's say, whoever um, pull up the, the poll, whoever wrote the poll actually. Uh, I, think, I think Harry was... So, I mean, I, I, maybe I, I'm wrong, I was always of the impression that the difference between unhosted and solid is that solid is based on like data. Well, unhosted follows, like you said, API, traditional JSON JavaScript development. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that the key bet that you're making is on RDF and URIs. Not necessarily. Okay. It's all about the URIs. It's not about, I'm, so I'm talking. Let me fit my question. So my question is, I mean, URIs, are you expecting people to buy their own servers in URIs? And then the second question is, you know, I mean, URIs are technically controlled by ICANN, and to some extent you could argue, at least politically, so far. Mm -hmm. So, first question. I don't expect people to buy and run their own servers. I expect there will be a lot of uh, data providers, like peop services which offer you storage, basically. Um, some of them will make some really um, complicated promises in terms of uh, what kind of um, privacy level expectancy you can have. but. Ultimately, the point is that even if those services are bought by a less friendly company, uh, you still have the option to move the data somewhere else. It's, it's not like you're getting locked into a specific data storage which has its own internal format that even if you get access to the data, you won't be able to reuse it somewhere else. You won't be able to import it somewhere else. The data is generic, so you can you can switch servers at any point, and you can also have as many servers as you want. So it's up to you, basically. You have the, the point, the core point is that you have choice. Yeah. And I want yeah. to add something. Yeah. Um, uh, I yeah, it works. And, uh, OK. So I, um, I want to throw some ideas, which could be also very extreme. But the key thing of Solid is that uh, you have this uh, access control and decentralized identity and hopefully an interoperability that could um, happen because of linked data or because of anything else. And but the thing, the key thing is that what Solid needs or what Solid really depends on is URIs. Mm -hmm. And if you want to run, um, if you want to run your application on your own server because you have the power to, good. If you want to trust someone else, good. If you want to, if you don't trust anybody, you don't want to buy your own server, potentially you can even proxy whatever service you want to use, whether this is IPFS or some blockchain build mm -hmm. stuff. As long as things have URIs and are read and writable. And they're on the web. And, and they can be accessed on the web, you can use them. As long as you can use HTTP, basically, to read and write data, I think, it's fine. I think it's really worth adding to that, that, for example, I think a really cool demo would be to uh, work with uh, LDP Solid on HTTPS URLs, one on a Tor, behind Tor, and one behind I2P. I2P is the, Tor is the onion URLs, uh, I2P is the uh, uh, direct URLs, because they're smaller, a bit more efficient. And, and, and to show that you can have a social network behind these things. And now, so it's clear that, that because LDP is uh, linked data is, uh, is is so beautifully designed uh, in, in very, very carefully uh, um, uh, sliced sections, uh, it's completely possible to work with uh, uh, LDP behind Tor, behind Onion, and any kind of new scheme, uh, DNS naming scheme that will come up that doesn't require a, a centralized system. So it's, 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 it's open to, to extension there. And in fact, we're open to working with, uh, if we can create URIs for uh, the blockchain, we can create links to blockchain elements or from the blockchain into LDP. And I think that's where the voting, so that's why I want to point yeah. out, is that where we could get really cool voting uh, systems and consensus building systems. Right, uh, I think this is all, and thank you so much. And reach us on Twitter or on GitHub, and I think it's time for food. Yes. yes. yes.